that the woman that's part of this organization that they've been trying to say for years has been great and it hasn't. And then comes Caitlyn and they're like, no, it's not because Caitlyn, we've been like this. We have been had players like this. You might have, but guess what? We wasn't paying attention to him. We wasn't paying attention to him. So you owe Caitlyn. All right, cool. Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy Chocolate with the Sexy Body. Welcome to a new episode of Chocolate Plays Reaction Videos. You know what it is for your girl, Katie Clark. Look, I want to just say this. This is going to be a short video. I, I, I think it is. I don't know because I'm supposed to be coming back tonight and doing a lot. But I just got to say this. I got to say this for Caitlyn that I think it's time, high time, for people to start apologizing to her. I think it's time for all these people who are out there who said that she wasn't going to be able to make it, that, she, that said that she wasn't ready for this lead, that it was going to be real rough on her. I think they need to all get up there and apologize. Even if they don't apologize directly, I need them to say something that's a direct comment towards Caitlyn and what she has done for the WNBA. That's what I would like for them to do, because this young woman has single handedly changed the landscape of the game, whether you like it or not. Yes, it was gaining speed two years ago with Asia Wilson and her play. I'm telling y'all. It, it would have gradually increased over time, but not as exponentially fast as it has with Caitlyn in, in, in the helm right now. With Caitlyn being where she is right now, that's why it moved way faster than it was. It was moving faster because there are some girls in the WNBA that can play. We know this. I've said this time and time again because of Caitlyn. I know of you, Asia, because of Caitlyn. There was no other way I was going to know about you. I'm telling you, they don't talk about you guys enough in the NBA, for starters. And check this out. I wasn't really watching the NBA. I wasn't really watching sports like that, so I damn sure wasn't going to be watching no WNBA. Now, everything that this girl Kaylin has gone through, all that ridicule, and for her to be where she is statistically and her team record-wise, if the, if the WNBA was the end today, they would be in seventh seed going into the playoffs. If it was the end today, seven seed going into the playoffs. That team has turned it around that much at the starting off zero and eight. Eight straight losses. To turn around now, they 11 and 14. They two games away from tying their uh, win total from last year under the same coach. So for everybody out there who was pissed at coach sides, wonder why she was coaching the way that she was. Because she felt like her way is what worked. She felt like the way she coached them last year could be coached the same way this year. Just add Caitlin. You can't do that. You can't do that. Because you're not, the way you coach was a 13-game winning team. This isn't a 13-game winning team. Not with Caitlin on there, it's not. You got three all-stars, guys. Hate all, anybody can say whatever they want to say about Mitchell. Hate all you want. But the girl is an all-star. She just needs to know her place and she's learning it. That's why this team is flowing well. That's why it's clicking. People taking notice too. People taking notice to all the damn things. I didn't say it already. I was listening to Cameron and them on, on uh, their show. It is what it is. I love that show. Shout out to that show. I wish I could do a part on that show. Or they could come and sponsor me. Please. Sponsor. I, hey, I'm here. But I was watching that show. And Cameron goes, you know what? She got a lot of turnovers. But I'm going to tell you what. She's only responsible for like three of those turnovers. He's like, man, I saw the, the highlights and them slow it down and her teammates not catching. That is true. And who said that shit? Who said it? I promise I said it. Go look at my videos way back before this. I'm trying to tell y'all. Cam did say this. He said that shit today. On, on July, the what the hell today is? July the 17th, 2024. I said that shit way back by probably two months ago. Right after my assessment of her, because this is what I understood. People wasn't watching her play basketball. They were just making up shit. They were just making up stuff, saying all these damn things about her. She can't play defense. She can't. Look, she is not the best defender on that team, but hasn't she been coming up big on defense lately? Hasn't she? Y'all remember that clutch block that she had, I want to say, about eight games ago? Like, the girl is good. She got back on defense for that. I think it was against the sky. I cannot remember, but she's good. She's good on paper. And she's good in life. And everybody who has something bad, negative, say, come on, you gotta eat your shit. Eat your words. Everybody. You wasn't paying attention. You couldn't have had. You wasn't paying attention at first. Now you are. People are paying attention so much. In fact, that this girl, who's this a, she's a rookie, first All-Star appearance, got over 700,000 votes. Over 700,000 votes when last uh, year's vote-getter only got 95,000. Nobody's saying anything about her being the number one vote-getter. 
When Asia was at the top, they was like, Asia has a slight lead on Kaylin by a thousand votes. As they kept saying. But nothing. They didn't make no announcement once Kaylin overtook her. Look, Kaylin is making these people eat their damn words. And it's the people that are in the WNBA. We talk about executives. That lady, Cheryl Reeves, that hurt that shirt on, she's a, a board of directors or some shit like that. Operated, operative uh, assistant something, she, but she's up there. Not only is she a coach, but she has a, a part in the committee of the WNBA. The same committee that did not want Kaylin to be on our Olympic team. That's the woman. That's the woman that's part of this organization that they've been trying to say for years has been great and it hasn't. And then comes Caitlin and they're like, no, it's not because Caitlin, we've been like this. We have been had players like this. You might have, but guess what? We wasn't paying attention to him. We wasn't paying attention to him. So you owe Caitlin, dummy. That don't make any sense. You talk all that shit about what was there. We don't know about it, but we know about it now because of who is there right now. And you don't want to acknowledge that person. All you got to do is acknowledge her. Because it's a trickle down effect, guys. If the people at the top, the presidents, all the people that sitting on the board of trustees and the committee shits, if they don't like you, you think anybody else under them don't like you? Hell, they got to side with them because if they don't side with them, that's the people that pay their they checks. That's the people that get them commercial times and get them all this, this flights and all this the food and everything. They got to they gotta cater to them. Why do you think all these other people out there are catering to the narrative that they're painting about LeBron James' son? Right. Because this is going to be the new narrative for Caitlin. There's no go, there's no no longer a rivalry between her and and uh, Angel as far as Ricky of the year. Now, they're going to make this rival like playing wise. But Ricky of the year. Now, it's just out the window. They, there's no more. They ain't nobody to talk about Angel no more. They even talk about her. Why? Because she ain't got the streak no more. Her rebounding is what kept her in a conversation of Ricky of the year when Caitlin of everything else was way better than hers. Everything else is better than her except for rebounding. So you got to make a new narrative and this is going to be the new narrative. All these people getting behind Bronny saying that, oh, y'all expecting too much from him. He's a second round draft pick. Why are you expecting so much from a second round draft pick? Y'all, y'all bugging. Why y'all tripping like this? Right. Then they're going to compare him and what he's going through to what Kalen went through. Seven minutes in, guys. If I made it to seven minutes, I want y'all to do bounce your shoulders. You know, you bounce your shoulders. I would do a dance party, but I got to. I try to get this out that fast. I try to get by ten minutes, but because I got to go into this part of this, the narrative that they're gonna paint is that he's going through the same thing that Kaylin went through. No, this is not the same because Kaylin has a resume. She had broken records in college. She has played on USAA teams. And had won gold medals. I think she got three gold medals. Kaylin is ready. Bronny is not. Kaylin has a resume that shows that she's ready to play. Bronny does not. And what Bron James wants to do is have his son be able to develop in the NBA. How is that possible when the speed of the game is nothing like the speed of the game in college and there's nothing like the speed of the game in high school? All of which he only played one season of college ball. He had a heart attack. So he'd been out of, out of basketball for a very long time and he comes back and I don't think he stayed long enough where he was. See, what I'm saying right now is not a knock against Bronny James. What I'm saying right now is, I mean, it's fucking obvious. He did not spend enough time developing his craft and now you're going to take him into the NBA, right? Which is supposed to be the greatest basketball organization in the world. And he's in summer league. And he's doing what he's doing in Summer League. You mean to tell me he's going to get out of Summer League and then he's going to get with the, the actual NBA players? And he's going to get better? How? How? When he's not good against the Summer players? That's what Gilbert Arena said. Gilbert Arena said, watch, man, wait until he get up there with all the people, with his daddy and everything. Going for, with your daddy? You eat your daddy like that? Boy, do you know how they finna be picking with this dude? They finna be picking with his ass. And you know what? I don't even think, I don't, I don't even think Brownie want to play basketball. To be honest, I don't think he want to play basketball because he plays video games and he's very good at them. He just won a competition. Let me tell you something. Anybody who has anything else in line with what they're doing that makes them money, they're going to treat it the exact same way. But if he's really, really good at playing the game, he's going to play the game. His focus is on the game. He shouldn't have that joystick in his hand. He should be in there taking reps, multiple reps, with, since he don't have no three-point shots made in the, in the NBA, in the summer league. He's zero for 12. You need to be shooting threes, 100 threes a game from all corners of the damn court. You need to work on the game, the parts of your game that you have miscues in in summer camp with your daddy. You need to meet up with him or anybody, any other players. 
and learn this game. Because I'm going to tell you something. They put you in a fire. And this shit is nothing like Caitlyn. Nothing like Caitlyn. She already had the stats and figures coming from where she was coming from. She played in two national championships. It was that damn close. Back-to-back national championships. What was her average in points? Something like 20-something? Do you know LeBron's averages? You put their averages up next to each other. They're not the same. Caitlin earned everything that she's getting right now. This dude didn't. He didn't. And everybody, because they're cool. They're cool with LeBron. They don't want to say anything bad about him. Now you got people talking about how, you know, he's 19 years old, so we need to be careful how we talk about him. Y'all wasn't careful how you talked about Markel Folks. Y'all wasn't careful how you talked about Ben Simmons. You wasn't. Markel Folks, whole, his whole psyche was jacked up to where he couldn't even shoot. Now you want to talk about somebody's age and get, get the hell up out of here. LeBron got y'all like the mafia. They're at the mafia over there on these boys, man. And look, I ain't said nothing bad. I just said the facts. I said the facts of what I've seen. Isn't that what people go by when you, that's, that's his resume. If I gave you a resume of me only, uh, let's see. What can, I, what, what can I put this as? Hey, fuck, we can still do basketball. I gave you my resume. for ba- You never seen me ever play basketball before in your life. And I turned in my resume for basketball. And it said average five points, two assists, three rebounds, zero steals, uh, 0.5 blocks, five turnovers, 25 minutes of play. I'm 20% shooter. What you going to do with my resume? That shit going to the back of the pile. Check this out. This is what I believe would have happened. I believe Bronny would have win faster than he did had not them Rich Paul and them threatened all those other teams and not pick Bronny. He would have won. He would have won earlier because it's the spectacle, guys. And what they want to do, they want to control this narrative. If he goes to the Lakers and he doesn't play well in the summer league, guess what? He's not going to get cut. We already paid him. He's got his guarantee money. He'll be on the team. He'll just practice with us. That's exactly what is happening right now. If you got picked up by any other team in the NBA and outside the Lakers and Phoenix Suns, because the Phoenix Suns is going to get LeBron over there if they if they were to pick uh, pick the Bronny. I'm telling y'all, whoever got Bronny was going to get LeBron James, but whoever got Bronny outside of the Suns and Lakers were probably going to end up cutting him or sending him to the G League, and that's not what Bronny and them want. But I mean, or LeBron James and them want. But what does Bronny want? Because the way Brown is out there playing, it don't matter what the hell y'all want. His players was going to get his ass about this shit. He ain't going to make no damn roster like this. Anybody playing like this who did not have the Brown James name on them would not still be here. His ass would have been cut two games ago. It would have cut him for what? Keep him why? And this, this is the stupidest thing for him to be saying. He's trying to distance himself from his daddy, so he changed his name to Bronny. His name was LeBron James Jr. Now his name is Bronny James Jr. Who the hell is Bronny? Bronny. Does it make sense that you change your name to Bronny and you still a damn junior? Who the hell is the Bronny before you? Is LeBron James nicknamed Bronny? You, tell me what the, you should have stayed your ass in college, boy. I'm just being for real. I'm being honest with you. I wish because people don't want to say this thing because they want they don't want to sever their relationships with LeBron James and have the clutch sports and whoever the hell is dealing with them start talking crazy to them. Because you saw what happened with Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown made an honest opinion. This is his opinion. I don't think he NBA ready. And everybody coming at him. Now he got to change up his statement. You got to let this out an apology or whatever the hell that was that he had said. No, nah, Jalen, that was your opportunity. You're supposed to be the one, right, Jalen? You, you just got the conference MVP and you got the damn MVP for the, uh, the, the playoffs, the finals. You just got your trophy. You the man right now. You're a smart, educated black man. I need you to stand out in front of everything that you say. You need to get behind your opinion with that damn uh, uh, education that you got. You better get your ass up there and say some big words. Don't be to talk about how the it's a flex to be playing with your daddy. It's a flex to be playing with my daddy. It's a flex. My daddy got me here. My daddy, oh my, hey, my daddy do everything for me. Mm-hmm, my daddy. It's a flex, huh? The hell up. You just thought about saying that now because you had something, you had to find something to say. I mean, it really is a flex, though. There are not a lot of people can say they play basketball in the NBA with their damn daddy. Not a lot of people have been good enough. And in fact, the bronze son is not good enough. None of them have been good enough to be there. Show me one of them that's been good enough to be there. They all, otherwise they would be there. They know where near what their daddies are. These are, their daddies are anomalies. All these fathers had adversity. These kids don't. What the hell adversity did LeBron James Jr. have outside of that heart attack? He grew up in a mansion. 
fuck are you talking about? That's not where LeBron James grew up. LeBron James grew up in a in an apartment. What was it? One bedroom apartment? Two? I don't know. He looked like he's from the hood. They did not have the same lives. None of these players have the same lives as their parents. That's why they don't end up being as good. They don't have the same type of adversity. That shit has to be brought out of you. It has to be brought out of you. And Kobe was when they could do that. Kobe would have done that with Gigi. All right, look, we oh, 14 minutes. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, guys. Look, I'm stopping this. But Caitlin, all-star for parents. Most all-star votes. This girl is on fire. She's top 15, top 10, top five, all stat categories. Ricky of the year is hers. I think it's time. Start talking about it for the MVP. Start talking about Start talking about Caitlin for the MVP. I believe that. Look, guys, thank y'all for your time, man. I'm signing out. Look, if you're new to the channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. To become a part of Chocolate Crew. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell so you know when your boy drop videos. Peace.